actually probably already aware of kind of what peer charts got in this. It's a new development for it. So I'm going to give you some kind of background to it, kind of our vision is for that kind of new service. But running alongside kind of peer charts talking about the starts next year is a whole kind of load of work um, around integration and alignment. And what I kind of mean by that is how we can better kind of join up the landscape that's kind of currently out there. Um, because we know that it's not the greatest uh, landscapes out there, it's a bit of a kind of mess. Um, so what can we do to kind of improve that? Um, so we kind of start off, I'm going to get you a bit kind of background here. Um, kind of after the last, after the uh, referendum, there were a, a number of powers that were devolved to uh, uh, the Scottish Parliament and uh, the Scottish Commission powers. And um, there were employment powers that were uh, devolved through the, the, the Smith Commission. I might add that the, it wasn't the kind of full range of employment powers that were devolved, um, it was specific employment uh, powers, particularly in relation to the kind of work programmes that were operated by the, the UK government. Um, as a result of those powers, um, in April, I keep on saying last year, it's this year, um, in April this year we had um, uh, two services that um, commenced uh, delivery, uh, one year kind of transitional services. And that's the kind of Work First program and the the, the, the Work Able uh, program. Um, work First Scotland is currently delivering um, employment support for around about three and a half thousand disabled people, and our Work Able Scotland is currently delivering employment support for up to 1,500 people with a health condition um, who are at risk from losing their uh, 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 sorry at risk of long term unemployment. Our focus very much in the last kind of couple of years, I would say, has been uh, really building um, and to develop a kind of very much a unique uh, Scottish employment service. Um, and that will commence on the 3rd of April, which I believe is a Monday um, next year. Um, and, and I have a feeling that's coming really, really, really fast. It's going to be here in no time at all. Um, the service itself will have a, a budget of up to 96 million over the next five years from next April um, and it will aim to support up to a minimum of 38,000 people um, in the work. So what has our approach been for this new service then? Well, I think first and foremost we want this service to be really kind of different from what's happened before, um, really different. Um, and, and how do we kind of get that different approach? Well, what we've kind of done uh, over the last few years is we've taken a very much a kind of consult, we've had a public consultation, and it's been a, a really collaborative approach across government. We've worked with a huge number of stakeholders to develop this uh, new service. Um, and importantly as well, I think, as we've listened to the kind of people that are going to use that service. I think that's fundamental. Um, Secondly here, you'll see that we want this service to uh, embed the values of dignity and respect, um, fairness and equality, um, and also have a, a, a continuous improvement element as well. Um, we get asked quite often what we mean, what we mean by uh, kind of dignity and respect. Um, and I think kind of for me, it kind of means that you've got a service there that's kind of not using language um, uh, that kind of stigmatises people. You want to be really kind of careful. You want to kind of treat people exactly what it says with kind of dignity and respect. And I think we kind of need to kind of learn for this kind of uh, service when it kind of rolls out next year as well. Um, and we've got a kind of very much a kind of clear monitoring process, very much a transparent monitoring process for this new service to kind of make sure that we kind of get it right. And I think as you'll see the services develop, the service needs to continuously improve from day one, I think, um, and it needs to kind of make, be making sure it's really kind of uh, doing the right thing kind of for the people of Scotland. The third element here is um, we've worked collaboratively with public, private and third sector um, to deliver help uh, to those who need support. Um, there's nine contract awards being made this year um, across Scotland. Um, those nine contract awards, which I'll show you at the end here, I've kind of got a list of them all, um, there's 60 organisations within those nine contracts um, and th th those organisations include local authorities, we've got third sector, um, we've got Sc Scottish small and medium enterprises, we've got voluntary groups as well um, providing services and a whole range of subcontractors and specialist local providers. And the last element I've got up here for uh, our approach is um, really to uh, just, to we want to just establish a distinctly Scottish employability service. Um, 
We want that kind of service to kind of create a strong platform for future services. Um, and again, I just kind of mentioned that a minute ago there, um, but we're really taking a very much a transparent approach to kind of monitoring this whole, whole, whole service from day one. <coughs> What that will allow us to do is it'll allow us to kind of review what's happening, what's not happening. Um, what that then lets us do is kind of build in a, a, all these kind of changes kind of for future years. This service is going to run for about kind of five years. Believe it or not, we'll kind of, I would think by the end of kind of year two of this new service, we need to start really thinking about what this, the next service after that kind of going to look like. Um, so therefore, um, if we want to kind of make sure that we get that service right, we need to kind of learn from day one and take all those lessons learned. Um, and I think again, fundamentally uh, as well, um, that service uh, in five years is never going to be right if we didn't listen to the people that are using the service from day one. So the, the people that are using the service are fundamental, I think, in listening to their kind of feedback. So what's our vision for the new service then? Well, I've kind of got four, sub, four, four, four areas here. Um, do we want this new service to be kind of flexible, tailored, um, and a whole person approach? Um, what I kind of mean by that is that we want to engage with people um, on a high quality program. Um, we want their talents recognised, and we want their talents developed as well. And importantly, when we're talking about a kind of whole person approach as well, we know that the individuals that are kind of coming into the service is going to be the people that are furthest removed from the labour market. So they're going to have a number of barriers um, uh, that they need to overcome. So therefore, this new service will help um, uh, address those barriers as well, identify those barriers first and foremost, as I should have said, um, and address them. Secondly here, um, we want a service that's designed to support those who will engage with it. Um, what I mean by that is we very much want participants to engage closely with the new service. Um, one of the kind of key features, which I think is a really, really good feature, is that individuals that um, uh, engage with the service will be required to enter into <coughs> what's called a participation agreement. It's like a contract. It's like a contract between the kind of provider and that individual. And that contract will uh, effectively kind of set out what the individual needs to kind of do. Uh, and I'll also set out what the, the, the provider uh, uh, will do as well. Um, and it's very much a kind of two-way approach. Again, I'd mentioned a minute ago as well, um, our service is um, delivered across nine geographical areas. Um, and what these kind of areas reflect is the reality of Scotland's geography, um, Scotland's regional economies and its population spread. And it's very much a move away from what's ha what used to happen under the previous uh, UK government approach. Previous UK government used to kind of do a tender every three, four years, um, and that kind of tender used to kind of maybe have one or two kind of main providers, and those providers would provide the kind of work programmes across the whole of Scotland. Um, so this is very much a kind of a, a, a completely different approach that the the, the Scottish governments take. Um, in fact, I should have went back there. I'm jumping forward here. The, um, I just want to spend a couple of minutes here, really, on just kind of why this um, a, a program is really, really uh, different from previous projects. And I think, kind of, firstly, and for me anyway, um, the, the, the crucial element of this new service is that people's participation in Fair Start Scotland will be voluntary. Um, what that means is that they can engage with the new service without the fear of sanctions. Um, if they're not able to attend, which I think is fundamental um, and is very different from what's uh, uh, happened before. Um, secondly, um, another kind of key difference is that this will be the first mainstream employment programme in, in the United Kingdom um, that will offer uh, supported employment. Um, and many of you will know what supported employment is, which is a kind of place and train model um, that enables disabled people to kind of uh, learn on the job and support their colleagues. Uh, and a job coach. And it'll also include individual placement support. Um, again, uh, will be available for people with, that have severe and enduring mental health issues. Another key difference from previous programmes is that Fair Start Scotland will offer 12 months high quality pre-work support. Now that 12 month can be extended up to 18 months um, in particular instances where people have got higher support needs. Um, and uh, operating alongside that, you will have uh, a 12-month in-work uh, assistance as well. So there's 
possibility there for some individuals that are on this programme uh, to have up to kind of 30 months support, which is uh, really fundamental. Um, another kind of key area um, that uh, is different from previous approaches, um, and again, I've kind of mentioned this already again, but it's worth mentioning again, is that um, we listened to the people that were relying on services. We listened to quite a wide number of people and said, you're using these services at the moment, um, what's working with them and what's not working with them, and tell us what works and tell us what doesn't work. And that's really been fundamental in helping us to kind of uh, design and develop this new service. Um, and just a last touch as well, just to kind of touch on, is that Fair Start Scotland also um, will encourage providers to commit to fair work um, and community benefit agendas. Um, we'll expect the kind of providers to promote living wage employment. Um, we'll expect them to kind of promote no use of zero hour contracts um, or umbrella companies. We'll also expect them to commit to modern apprenticeships and developing the young workforce as well. So who's eligible for this new service then? Well, the focus is going to be in helping people with disabilities, um, long term unemployed and those who are disadvantaged in the labour market move, in, move into um, and sustain work. Um, that will include people with substance misuse um, uh, uh, issues as well. Um, what you'll start to kind of see over the next kind of few months, you'll start to kind of see a lot of the kind of provider websites that are already kind of being developed at the moment. They'll start to kind of come alive in the next kind of few months prior to the launch. The Scottish government itself as well is working on a kind of range of marketing. I think this is quite a fundamental service as well because it's voluntary. So we want to kind of make sure that we kind of get those messages out there to the kind of people of Scotland that are unemployed. Um, so that I would um, kind of keep your eyes open the next few months because that's going to be fundamental. Um, I spoke about the Fair Start Scotland there. And the Fair Start Scotland really focused on the needs of the individual uh, first and foremost. But really at its heart, um, what we kind of need to think about is much more uh, effective integration and alignment um, in supporting services. Kind of reason for that is to kind of make the landscape much easier than what it kind of currently is. A lot of kind of feedback from individuals is that the landscape out there is really confused and they don't really understand it as well. Um, and I don't think we're in, under any illusion as well that our integration and alignment agenda is going to be long term. It's going to take us quite a while to kind of uh, sort it out. Um, but we've made a good start already. Um, we made a good start earlier this year um, announcing our Employability Innovation and Integration Fund. Um, that fund um, was launched seeking uh, new proposals to kind of join up employability support with health and social care, justice and housing. Um, and in August we announced that 13 projects across Scotland had been uh, successful. Um, what we want those kind of projects to do is kind of test different approaches kind of test different ways of kind of joining up services at a local <coughs> level and let's kind of see what we can learn from those tests to see if we can mainstream them, can we replicate them in other areas and stuff like that. And we've got some fantastic projects, I'm not just saying that because there's two of them in here, but I know. Um, but uh, we've got some really, really good, good, good uh, projects um, and we're really excited to kind of see how these projects develop. We've got projects that are kind of focused on he helping people with mental health issues. We've got uh, another one that's kind of got a particular focus on drawing together a range of services for kind of people that are homeless. Um, and we've got another one as well which is specially designed to uh, target young people um, aged 16 to 21 who are uh, involved in offending behaviour. So there's quite a, a really good variety of projects as well, quite keen to see those uh, develop. Operating alongside that kind of fund, um, in the background, what we've been kind of doing within our employability division is we've been working across government um, probably for the last year or so now, um, effectively kind of chapping on doors and really just chapping on doors to say, tell us about your policy, tell us um, where, your policy, where your policies maybe got a wee employability focus, um, is that employability focus that you've got in your policy kind of up to date or is it a bit an old but antiquated? Um, so we've kind of learned a lot in the last year really kind of chatting those doors there um, and what all of that kind of work has led to is the development of um, what we're calling uh, an integration and alignment action plan. That plan will be published probably early next year, it's probably think the end of January next year. Um, Within that plan, we'll set out a range of actions. 
where we will uh, just look to kind of join up services much, much better than what they, they, they currently are. And I should have mentioned at the start of my presentation, I've got two asks, and this is the first two asks coming up. Um, that action plan that we're developing um, is going to include a focus on working with health and social care partnerships and alcohol and drug partnerships and other organisations across Scotland uh, to, improve, to improve employability outcomes for people with substance misuse issues. So my first ask of you today is that when that plan is published next year and then when work commences on that uh, engagement work, it's really just to kind of work with us. We want to kind of learn what's happening in your area, we want to kind of ha know what's happening at a local level, we want to kind of uh, identify areas of good practice and where things are really working and maybe where things aren't really working is great. Um, and we need all that information from you, so please do uh, kind of work with us next year. The last area that um, we've got here as well is there's a whole other uh, amount of work that's going on uh, with our uh, providers um, for Fair Start Scotland. What we're kind of asking them to kind of do at a, a local level is obviously engage with a wide variety of stakeholders um, uh, ahead of the, the uh, launch of Fair Start Scotland. Um, we know that the vast majority of people in here um, you're, you're all the experts here in kind of helping people with substance misuse issues. So my kind of second ask, I've got two asks, my second ask of you today is really to encourage you to work with those providers. Um, you've got the knowledge, so can I speak to those providers and can I and get, get your messages across? What do you think are going to be the kind of main issues that uh, kind of maybe providers are going to have in, uh, with people that have kind of got substance misuse, misuse uh, issues? But there's a terrific question yesterday when someone says, what happens if there's someone that's on this uh, Fair Start Scotland in the relapse? Will they just get kicked right off the programme? Um, and the simple answer to that is, is no, but they won't because there's kind of work breaks that are built into the, the, the new service. Um, and the, the, the service itself is going to be flexible. It's, it's going to be flexible for the kind of people that uh, are trying to help. So please do kind of work with those uh, uh, providers and kind of share your knowledge because I think that I think they'll benefit from it really hugely. Um, and the kind of final area, sorry, that I was just going to briefly mention there is that we've got a whole, a whole other range of uh, work that's going on as well, um, working in partnership with Scotland's local authorities at a local level. We know there's huge stuff going on at a local level, a lot of fantastic stuff going on at a local <coughs> level, um, and we really just kind of want to tap into a lot of that stuff and just kind of identify those areas where there's a really, really good focus on integration and alignment. And we want to kind of take a lot of these learned examples and good practice um, uh, and take these forward and kind of replicate them <coughs> in other areas. <coughs> this is the, a lot of you have probably already <coughs> seen this. This details on the Employability in Scotland website, by the way, I should say. Um, but this is all the providers. This is the, your local authority areas. You kind of see the successful bidders in the middle here, and you've got a range. You see, there's a large number of kind of delivery partners and subcontractors there um, for Fair Start Scotland. Um, and again, you'll see the kind of nine areas there, north, east, and west. And again, if you're looking for contact details, you want to kind of get in touch with those providers and stuff like that. Drop me an email. I'll get those providers' contact details over to you as well. So, thank you very much indeed.